All right, lots of big weathering waves news. We've got a release trailer. We've got a big cinematic. We've got a release date. And I am so excited because I haven't gotten into any of the weathering waves betas and I've barely watched any gameplay. So I don't really know a lot of what to expect, but if we're going to watch this big cinematic. Everyone's making a big deal out of it. And I'll tell you right now, I'm super excited for two reasons. Reasons number one, put on your headphones to experience Dolby Atmos. So I know uh, Vanguard Sound Crow Games, they've got, a, they've got an extensive history together. I've recently been listening to the Punishing Grey Raven soundtrack and it's incredible. So if they're already putting this kind of effort into the Wuthering Waves trailers and cinematics is going to be peak. Reason number two, 1440p quality. They're not capping it at 1080p. You know, the only thing we're missing is 4K, but honestly, that's a pretty big ask. So we've got high fidelity sound, high fidelity video. I'm stoked. Let's check it out. In a lot of ways, this is like my first Wuthering Waves experience because I, I just haven't seen much of it. I've seen just enough to keep myself excited. Speaking of excitement, oh, mama. Oh, lyrics. <laughs> this isn't a laughing matter, but I was going to say, you could tell by the, the vocal performance and that piano that we were about to witness a tragedy. They're coming out of the ground. Like Godzilla coming out of the hollow earth. Oh, it's building. Let's watch the trailer once through. And we'll go back and give the uh, give the music more attention. Break that down. Oh, we're about to get a nasty ass beat drop. What? Damn! Oh, this is crazy. It's like they're uh, they're blending 3D and 2D. This is giving me like a uh, Demon Slayer vibes, which is very much a good thing. Okay. We'll we'll save the music discussion for in a moment, but I've got a lot to say. Oh my gosh. Who is this? She's summoning Ori to destroy the blind forest. Who is that? I need her on my team. <laughs> Yo. Homeboy has four eyes, all the better to stare at these women. Oh, it's the dragon dude! Let's go! I don't know his name. I just know he's the dragon dude. And he's super hot with crazy cool animations. Look at his ass. Oh, dude. <laughs> Okay, hang on. All right, all right, all right. So <laughs> that was awesome. All righty. So let's let's uh let's listen to the music here and kind of break down how they use the uh, the music to create audio cues because it's really smart. Um, and again, I don't know. I guess I don't know. All right, good frame to pause on. I don't know if this is common for Kuro. Um, I know the PGR soundtrack. Like I said, I've listened to a bit of it recently, very recently. Um, but I've not played PGR. Um, I haven't really, I don't think I've seen any cutscenes from PGR. So I don't know if historically they do a really good job tying in the music with the visual storytelling, but they do in this one. And I find that a lot of times it's actually harder to do that whenever you have a song with lyrics. Some people think it's easier because you can make the lyrics match. That's not really true, especially when you look at it from like the development standpoint. Uh, you know, like the songwriter, the person responsible for writing the lyrics, they probably had nothing to do 
with the storyboard of the animation. There was probably a little bit of overlap, but in all reality, most of the time they work fairly independent from one another. Um, and especially if this is Vanguard Sound, because if my understanding is correctly, Vanguard Sound and Kuro, like they work together, but they are independent entities. Um, so the way that they actually pull this off with lyrics is really, really cool because with lyrics, it has a more rigid structure. It has a rigid story in and of itself. And a lot of times, like I said, it's actually more difficult to tie that into the visual storytelling because, you know, you can't just throw in like a cool section of a song or even loop back a prior section of the song because the lyrics are there. And, you know, it's a. Uh, We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it. I guess I'm all fired up. We got to let this play out for a second because the music doesn't even start for a, a minute or two here. The darkest hour is nearing. nearing. Boom. First there's darkest hour is nearing. The silence for drowning. The music is slow. It's somber. I'm not going to break down every lyric and how it ties into it, but to kick it off like that, like I said, my first time watching this, you already know you're about to witness tragedy here. You got that. That sad piano. Lots of sound effects right now. Obviously, the sound effects are telling their own story to tie in with the composition of the video. Not a lot of music at this point, but it's starting to build. And so what this is doing... The build is not only creating an opportunity for the song to transition. I mean, that, that's the, you know, the base composition of a song. They're going to build, especially if it seems like they are going to be following a lot of what PGR does with a lot of digital sounds. Um, they're going to have a lot of build so they can transition the song. But it's also transitioning the visual aspect because first we experience the tragedy. It's slow and somber. We're getting an introduction to the characters and then the characters are all about to have their own badass moments. And so as we're building in the song, the video is building as well but it's not super intense, it's not super in your face, right? The focus is on the visual aspect right now. We're seeing the characters, we're seeing the enemies, the bad guys. The build is getting more intense. As we see weapons, we see fire, we see more visual effects coming in with intensity and action on it. Then obviously we get this nasty ass drop. And then, all hell breaks loose with the music. Dude, the, the combination of 2D and 3D is so cool. And again, an underrated aspect of, you know, Sonic storytelling is sound effects. It's not just the music. You know, you got the sound effects helping tell the story of what you see because obviously you see something you want to associate a sound with it on top of the badass music in the background I don't know who this character is I gotta have her because the animation of the design are too clean alright where's the dragon guy because I gotta have him too this is going to be a problem. This game's going to be a big problem because I'm going to want everybody. Every character on the roster, I'm going to want them. I already know. Another build, another transition incoming, right? So we've got a different beat drop that happens there. It's not the same as what happened earlier. Um, I don't know. Would we consider this to be the, like the bridge of the song? Maybe I guess I'm, I'm not, not totally sure. But either way, you get another build up. It's creating another transition, not only in the song, but in the video itself. Uh, we get Dragon Guy. I'm sorry. I don't know the characters' names. Like I said, I'm not super familiar with the characters or anything because I, I didn't get into the beta and I threw my pity party every single time. And then I've actually just been uh, refraining from watching videos and streams and stuff because I want to experience it for myself like in totality. That could be a totally fresh experience. Uh, I don't know the dragon guy, but he's super cool. And so he even gets his own build up with a big, crazy animation coming down. And it's similar to what they did in the first half of the video with the ladies. You know, you get a little build up, introduction of the characters, and then all of a sudden it starts hitting the fan and you got the animations going crazy. Essentially, they repeat the process here. Oh. Oh. That's so cool. That is just crazy cool, man. That is objectively and factually badass. 
Mm. Wow. Like I said, I, I, I'm i still bummed that I haven't gotten to play the game yet in any betas. But this is really cool, experiencing this all for the first time. Alright, so that's the Saving Light cinematic trailer for Weathering Waves. I just realized they, they finally did it. They saved the daylight. We can cancel daylight savings time. Uh, the Weathering Waves cast saved light, and we don't have to do daylight saving times anymore. Thank God. So, I'm I'm really excited for this. This has got me fired up. There's a launch trailer, too, I think. Right? I need to go check that out. Because, um, like I said, I've been abstaining. I, I want the fresh experience. I'm glad that I've abstained. It's been really difficult, especially when I see, like, you know, other creators and streamers who I follow and I enjoy, like, playing the game and talking about it on Twitter and stuff. I just want to, like, kind of get in there, get involved, and familiarize myself. But this has been really cool to come in this almost entirely blind to the game and the cast and the characters. I'm familiar with how some of them look, like names. I, I, I don't know any of that stuff. So this, is, this has been cool. Super excited for Weathering Waves. What's the release date? It's coming out in May, right? I don't remember the exact date. I'll have to look that up. I'm super stoked. Let me know in the comments how excited you are. Leave a comment. Let me know who, what characters you're most excited for. I made it very obvious which two characters I'm most excited for, at least out of who we saw in this trailer. I, I'm, I'm fired up. I'm going to start rambling if we don't cut it off. So we're going to cut it off. I'll see you in the next video. Love the games. Love yourself and I love you. Bye.